Hey, Eli here. Today I have the Canon 35mm 1.4 version 2 on the GFX 100S with the Fringer adapter. I love this adapter because of the aperture ring. But yeah, about this setup, I bought this lens because I tested it out in a camera store and found that it did cover the sensor really well, better than the Sigma version of this lens. And so I've really had a lot of fun with it. It's similar to like a Leica Q, uh, obviously a lot larger and then a little bit different focal length, a little less distortion. But yeah, I um, have I found out I don't like 4-3 ratio horizontally with this lens. It's just really boring. Uh, there are times when, you know, it is helpful, like if you're shooting inside somewhere and you want to just get, you know, a scene. But uh, using the in-camera crop ratios of 16 by 9 and 65 by 24, like an X-Pan, has been super fun. So I was just out in Austin, for my wife's birthday and I decided to try and shoot the whole oh, I did shoot the whole trip 65 by 24 when you're shooting uh, with this camera you can have a JPEG output that actually crops it and it's set in stone but you get to see the field of view through the lens through the EVF and the camera but then in the raw you just get the flat image raw um, it'll crop it for you but then you can move the crop around and so it you know allowed me to you know grab images if I wanted to have the full scene, I still have it. You know, there's only a couple times that I really needed, you know, four by six or 16 by nine to get that full scene. But for the most part, uh, 20, 65 by 24 was awesome, super fun. And so, yeah, so I just wanna kind of run through some images today. I did a little comparison in my backyard with the 28 to 70 at 28 millimeter on the Canon with the R5 and this setup just to kind of see the field of view. And then just like, um, yeah, a little picture of a wall just so you could see the distortion up close and what these lenses do uh, with straight lines. I also did a little focus test with my brother, um, just kind of playing around, just seeing how it focused, and it focused fine. You know, um, again, get a lot of questions about this camera. The focus is horrible when you compare it to an R5 or an R6 or an R6 II, R3 or any Sony. Uh, I think it's kind of equivalent to maybe a Leica Q2 or the old, I mean, Sony um, A7 Arc 2 You know, it's really not good. It's accurate with the phase detect in the 100S. The 50S doesn't have phase detect, so it hunts a lot more. The 50S2, same thing. But this, um, you know, with the phase detect, I find it, you know, it focuses and it stops a lot more often than it would with the 50 or the 50S or 50S2. So yeah, let's jump in the computer. We'll start out with some images in my backyard. You can see here on the right, we have the GFX obviously in a 4-3 ratio. On the left, we have the 28 millimeter. And so you're getting a little more light out of the 28 millimeter, which is interesting. Uh, they're both at F2. The settings I think are identical. Yeah, 400 ISO. And so you're gonna see on the right, um, you'll see this log kind of disappears. I put these on a tripod to get them as close as possible, but I wasn't exact. So it's, it's pretty much, from what I'm seeing here, equivalent side to side. And then top to bottom, you're getting a little more out of the image. But then you're also losing a little bit of distortion in the, you know, the middle is going to be a little closer versus, you know, a 28 mil versus 35. The other comparison I have here is we want to look at, it's kind of, you know, like a brick wall test, but I don't have a brick wall. So on the right, you're going to kind of see a little funky distortion on the sides and the corners where you can see these lines get a little weird. So you want to be careful how you, you know, compose your image, make sure you're horizontal where the 28 millimeter holds up a little better on the sides. So cool. All right, let's jump into a little bit of work. Um, I had this out when I first got it for an engagement session. I photographed vertical because I wanted to see how that did on a vertical image with 35 millimeters should have very little distortion and it wasn't bad. So lens profile on and off, you can see that is at 1.4. And these images will be accessible. Well, not these images, some of them without any of my clients, uh, any pictures of me or my brother will be accessible. So see very sharp. And here, this is where I would want to take and crop this image and I think I delivered it at a 16 by 9 so we will see with the lens profile on and off so there's a little bit left over in the corners I uncropped all of these images um, so that you can see what it looked like so if we crop this 16 by 9 I think you get a lot more of a dramatic 
an interesting image. So, okay, and here again, we are at 2.2, .2, so I stopped it down a little bit, and then let's see with the lens profile on and off there. And this image, I would probably go again 16 by 9. Yep, that's probably how I delivered it, and then right about there. And just a family shoot up close, we can see we're at 2.2, .2, and I liked this one because we can see there's the distortion, but we can see at 2.2, .2, we're still, let that load, we're still pretty sharp on the edges, on the sides. So, yeah, which is great, you know, something that you might be concerned about at a white, with a wider lens. But yeah, still very sharp right here, and then at 2.2, .2, we're getting a lot of depth of field, so... And next up we have, this was um, so my friend of, uh, friend of mine is a realtor, Tony, and we did some photos in a home. And we will look at that lens profile on and off. And then this one, most likely I delivered two by three. Yeah. And we are at 1.4 and let's see how the focus did. So large images. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, nice and sharp right here. Right here, they're both in focus. And yeah, just a great looking image. And then next one up. This is outside vertically. And this is uncropped. Yeah. And we'll look at that lens profile on and off. Yeah, it's changing a little on these lines up here. but And this is at 1.4. Man, large files. All right, there we go. Nice and sharp, and very little distortion down here. There's a lot of lines in this image, and I think it held up really well. You just want to be careful when you are taking the image that you be aware of that. And yeah, this one here, just a horizontal, 1.4, looking great. Awesome. And then we went out with my brother, and here are some images at 1.4. Nice and sharp. These images in particular will be available for you if you just follow the links through my websites. You can download them. And there's me with all my gray hairs, nice and sharp. And my brother, nice and sharp. And one thing I did want to test, and yeah, I was trying to get some lens flare in here. I love Canon lens flares. I think that they're probably the prettiest. They've got some red in them, and you know, a lot of times you get rainbow colors. Really pretty. So that's a reason that I would pick this 35 over the Sigma. But it also does cover the sensor better. Oh yeah, let's look at some of these right here. Just give you that. There. And again, download these. Look at them. Check them out. Edit them. See what you think of the profiles. These are all in Astia Soft. And then my preset on them. Looking good. Yeah, this lens, like here's one, I would probably go 16 by 9 or even, um, let's see, let's go 65. Yeah, so this is kind of, the, this is where it gets really fun. And you still have an insane amount of resolution. And these lines are holding up really well. So, yeah, really cool. All right, and then up close, profile on and off, and vertical. Vertical's holding up pretty good. You just gotta be really careful of the lines, but that one worked out pretty good. And then, yeah, so then really quickly, I just wanna run through my trip really fast. Uh, got a few select images. Uh, this is where I just had a blast shooting uh, at an, like an X-pan ratio. So we were greeted at the airport with Bigfoot, and then we, our flight got delayed, and so we sat around the airport forever, and we were really bored. And uh, yeah, then we finally made it to Denver, and you can see this resolution is pretty darn rad. And low lights, this camera just holds up. This is a 2500 ISO, which is nothing for the GFX. They can go to 10,000 really easily. There we go. 
cool and just kind of run through. It was really fun to document. Here I photographed at 4.3 because I just want to see how it would work as like an interior uh, image and yeah, camera. <laughs> and it, it did pretty good. You know, there was, there's some distortion, you know, on the edges, which is to be expected, but really control, well controlled for being, a, you know, a 35 millimeter camera lens. And let's throw. Yeah, because these are 2.2. You start to, you know, lose a little bit of that vignetting when you stop down, but 2.2 yeah, two is still... Yeah, these are uh, cropped, so let me reset that. You can see the corners. So yeah, anyway, back to... This is what this image looked like if I looked at the raw, and then I shot it this way, and so it crops it in Lightroom for you, and then after you can go and adjust, so if I wanted to go up or down... It allows me to do that, but, you know, I'm trying to get the images, you know, straight out of camera where I want them and then go from there. Um, but just a super fun, like again here, I think I had to bring this one down just because when you're shooting, sometimes you just don't see the full uh, field of view through your EVF or you're in a hurry. So I'll go back through just some more images. I'll go through fast. These are really fun. So this one here, obviously I did a 4x6 because I wanted to get the full scene, and then this is what it was like, cropped at X-Pan. But yeah, this is just super fun. I just, you know, can't get over it. Here's a vertical image at 0.8. And just a fun way to document life. And this would be really fun for client images as well. Engagement sessions, even weddings. And I did set a hot button to uh, change my crop. So it's a little faster. But yeah, Austin, just a great place to experiment, have fun, play, eat lots of good food. And just love this scene. It's so cool. And again, a lot of these will be in the sample images. You can play with them. So here. Getting that full scene, cropping it down, it's a lot more interesting to me. And then the neon signs are just a blast. So we're at 5,000 ISO, getting some great images. And this one I was, you know, trying to do some fun double exposures, but we can see here at 5,000 ISO, we're still getting a lot of detail with that load. And you can, you know, you can push these images so far. Just running through, showing you what it all looks like. Even handed it off to my wife, she did a pretty good job. Um, and this scene here, it's hard to like, you know, <laughs> not use the whole image, but you know, I would, I, I, saved both and exported both to my personal gallery but i think that you know the, this being a good image this is just still really fun you know to have it you know, a wide field of view I'll run through a few more and then we'll get into a focus test so yeah this is just a fun you get this full panoramic scene of my wife over here the guys on the horses um, this awesome <laughs> motorcycle with the uh crazy sissy bar that's awesome. I didn't even notice that till now. There's so much character in Austin. And then these guys playing music inside. This is just a low light beast with 1.4 going to high ISO with the GFX. And here we are. You can see. Let me pull the grain out just so you can see what how sharp this is. I mean, it's absurd. <laughs> At 100 megapixels, this thing really holds up, this lens. So Canon did a good job when they put this lens together for... Gosh, they built it for, what, a 30 megapixel camera? 20. And my wife's birthday. Just fun to document all of this. Yeah, love these images. A lot of these were out of focus, and so... 
this camera. You just got to shoot a lot and hope you get something, and if you don't, you don't. And then, yeah, we got ended up in Reno on the way home, and back home. Cool. All right, let's jump into this focus test with my brother. I kind of handed the camera back and forth. This is on the Axion screen recorder, and so it is 1080, so hopefully this carries over. It's not too out of focus, you know, too low resolution for you, but you can get an idea what we got going on here. We tested a lot of lenses, so we had to post it so we, I would remember which was which. And we're on AFS because I do find it way more accurate to use AFS instead of uh, AFC, which is continuous. So I press uh, back button to focus. I find it get a lot more keepers that way. Continuous just hunts too much. So we're doing pretty good. And I've also found that with the adapter, I have to turn on and off eye detect to get it to engage. So I'll press eye detect there and then it'll start to grab his eyes. Also, no matter where the focus point is on any Fuji that I've experienced, it'll grab the eyes no matter where your focus point is. So it can be kind of jumpy and unpredictable. But here we can see if I'm walking towards him, it's not going to focus unless I'm standing still. So, and then here I jumped into some fun crop modes. So 16 by 9. And then we went to that 65 by 24, which super fun. So this is what you see in camera when you're shooting. I imagine other Fuji cameras have this. I haven't checked. But I feel a lot more confident doing it with a 100 megapixel medium format camera. Doing pretty good. So you can see the consistencies and how slow it is. And here we hand it off to my brother. And then he, he's a decent photographer. So he is able to take pictures of me. Not too bad. Once you learn your limitations of any camera, you you know when you know to use it and when to not. Um, you know, <laughs> for example, if I'm photographing ceremonies and anything moving, I'm using the Canon cameras, and then if I'm uh, have time, I'm taking portraits with this camera. So I'll also use this for. I just photographed um, a restaurant yesterday. And I use this camera primarily. I took over 500 images with it. And, you know, I know its limitations. I know when to be slow, when to, you know, really check my focus, when it's going to, you know, when I get close with the GFX within, you know, nine feet, I know it's going to be, you know, questionable. It's dependent on the lens. And so when I get further out, I know it's a lot more accurate. Uh, don't know why that is, but that's what it is, what it is. And so this setup here, I love it. It's super fun. Um, it also fits in my camera bag, which this Tamarack is my all-time favorite camera bag. It hugs your body, and if the camera fits in here, I'm good to go. Uh, it was really nice just taking one camera on a trip. Um, I might do like a personal family trip documentation video at some point, but I found that um, having one lens is just it's kind of freeing whether it is a you know 24 to 70 whatever it is uh, i took a 24 to 70 to europe and that's all i had uh, with me for this trip it just this pushed me a little further to be creative uh, 35 millimeter and so i find that having that one lens one camera don't have to think about it especially when i have a kid hanging off of me it's easier for me to just be like all right i have that one lens that's all i'm using so but uh yeah that's the end of this video <laughs> Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, I highly recommend this setup. It's super cool. Uh, if you have this with the 80, I think that that's an awesome combo. You could photograph, you know, portrait sessions, engagement sessions, all kinds of stuff, uh, because you do have that ability to crop down, you know, as, almost as far as you want with this setup because the resolution is so high. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. If anyone else has, has used this setup, I'd love to know. Uh, or a similar setup. I think that 35 is just getting at the edge of that limit. Uh, the 40 millimeter, you know, was a little more controlled. 
Uh, but I think that, yeah, this is kind of on the edge. You know, you can get a 24 millimeter and then just crop it, which, you know, is fun too. But I think that this is, is enough field of view for me uh, for any kind of portrait. I don't think I need to go further than that. Um, I do use wide lenses to capture like a ceremony or a reception hall. So I use the 14 mil and that's pretty much all I use that for. I don't use it for portraits, which you could, but I think that I like to stay within um, 35 or 28 if possible. So cool. That's the end. And uh, yeah, hopefully I get some other videos out that are somewhat helpful and interesting. I'm going to try and do a print resolution video uh, with my printer. I just got some paper and some ink. So hopefully I get that out soon. So have a good week and thanks for watching.